Good morning. Today I'm cooking breakfast. It's supposed to be a nice day, so we might get out a little bit. But I just thought I'd show you what I'm doing this morning. In our last video, you saw me cooking like a 10 grain cereal. This time I'm cooking grits. I've never made grits before. In fact, I'm not even sure I've ever had them. But um, my kids got like instant grits. And uh, you know, it's a thing in the South. Well, unfortunately, they didn't like it. <laughs> they didn't like instant grits. So I got real grits. And I'll show you the package. And just yellow grits. It's just basically ground up corn. Yeah, it's funny how when they show you the ingredients, it just says yellow grits. It doesn't say that it's made from milled up corn, but that's what it is. I'm boiling over. Thank you, Jen. I got it. I got it. I got it. Anyway, so we're going to try this first hand real grits made on the stove rather than instant grits. And they cook for 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna turn it way down because it's kind of bubbling. And then I think I might put a little bit on it. And then I'm cooking bacon in the oven. It's the best. Oh, you got a little steamy there. <laughs> you like bacon too, huh? Hey, everybody. So it is in the afternoon now. I was <clears throat> cooking this morning. The grits turned out good. I'm not sure they're everybody's favorite, but, you know. Oh, there we go. They turned out okay. It's a nice day. I've got big kids. They left and went to the library and... I know, I want to go too. Um, we were waiting on our car to get serviced and so we haven't been able to really like leave with everybody. So we've been kind of homeward bound. But I was working on curriculum today. Kids have been playing curriculum. Oh, schoolwork. I've been working on kind of putting together schoolwork. So we started schoolwork last week. We've done it full force this week. And next week we actually start the the rest, so I layer it. And I always do that. I used to only start in October, and the reason being was because uh, we had so many activities with the studio going on that um, starting right in September when the kids on the West Coast went back to school just didn't make any sense for our family. <clears throat> with all the things that we were doing. We had the studio going on, and for me to put that kind of pressure on myself, just, <laughs> it was tough. I didn't like doing it, so I never did. So, um, I purposed in my heart, though, to start really early this year, for a couple of reasons. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep like moving the legs on this tripod, and I apologize, so I'll fix that. So, people on the East Coast, or in some of the more southern states, they have a tendency to go to school a little earlier than we do on the west coast. Um, so I decided we were gonna start, not this week, but the week before last. And um, so last week, not this week. And it ended up doing just fine. We ended up missing one day because we traveled, um, but that's it. And it worked out really well. We typically do about an hour to two hours a day on schoolwork. Now there's only three of them that I'm technically schooling anymore. All the rest have graduated and or done, been finished. I really only have three little monkeys in, the, in school. That being one of the monkeys. Are you one of the monkeys? Yeah. This is my circus. These are my monkeys. And so, um, because I only have the three of them in school, I also have my older ones who 
are here with us, they're still learning with us. Now, that doesn't mean they're in school. I, they don't have any math or anything like that that I'm giving them, but they do participate, which is cool. Uh, anyway, so I purposed in my heart to start in August uh, just because I wanted, first of all, to get a jump start, knowing full well that we would have um, maybe a week or so or more after we find a property uh, that we may not be doing anything because of us working towards either getting the house all together or it being in upheaval or whatever. So I just want to give ourselves a little grace. Plus, everybody goes back to school early here, so I just thought we would get right on it and all the school supplies are out, so we started. Anyway, writing curriculum. Um, it's kind of fun, I love doing that. The other thing I did today which may seem really kind of ridiculous, but it's an excellent way to visualize what you want. And so I'll show you down here. So see all those little pieces of paper on the floor? Uh, I know you can't really see and they're probably very blurry. Those are all the things I want on my property. So I, it sounds ridiculous, um, but the house is right there in the center. And then I have garden. Greenhouse, big farm animals, I want a pool, <laughs> my chickens and rabbits, and so on. We have a pond, but it's currently being co colored by that young lady right there, and so it's not in our map. But this is basically what we have going on here. Now, <clears throat> in all fairness and full disclosure, we have officially put in an offer on a house. Um, I'm not telling you where just yet, and I'm not telling you any other details other than the fact that we're waiting on that. That could fall through. So we are holding it very lightly, trusting that the Lord has us in his hands. And um, in the meantime, I have all these little fun pieces of paper on the floor that I can just pick up and... Uh, depending on what our future property looks like, it might look like that, it might not. But this is how I plan. Since I won't have the opportunity to basically look at the property and kind of mull it over for months and months, which is really technically what you should do so that you have, you know, you can see it through all seasons. You can see it when there's a lot of rain. You can see it when um, it gets really dry and hot. You can see it if it snows or, or whatever. And because I can't, ha I don't have the opportunity, we are walking into a piece of property that um, it will be unknown to us. And whether it's this one that we're hoping for since we put in an offer or another one that we, that the Lord has for us, we have these fun little pieces of paper that we will just kind of move around and see, you know? Thankfully, paper is movable. And if I don't like the way something looks or is sitting on here, maybe the sun doesn't hit it quite right or whatever, I can move it. And that is the nice thing about these. Make the mistake on the floor <laughs> with these little pieces of paper because it's a whole lot easier to move around than when you make a mistake in real life. Now I got this idea, I didn't make it up on my own, I'm, I'm not that clever or brilliant, although it does kind of look like something I would do. Um, I got this from Justin Rhodes. If you don't follow him and you're at all interested in permaculture or farming, I've said it before on my channel, follow him. Uh, his newest thing is called Abundance Plus and I am a member and I highly recommend it. Um, it, it is one of those things where I am taking a master class through him and have been for quite a while. Um, the, he talks about doing something similar to this. I may have gone a little bit overboard than what he suggested and I may have uh, overdone it. Nah. Anyway, so this is my master plan. I do have a couple other things that I didn't quite know how to print out and put on here but it all has to come in timing and it has to come in layers. It won't, I mean, I won't be able to move in and just do that. Because this house that, or this piece of property that we put in an offer on really only has a house. 
and that driveway that you see that little curvy driveway that's it so we are gonna wait and see and Lord willing this is the property if not then we have an opportunity to look some more and I will just scoop up all my pieces of paper put a paper clip on them and wait <laughs> so uh, that's kind of where we are today lots of fun the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is just a couple of days ago, it was our anniversary. I'll say it that way. <laughs> and we've been married 20 years. So I just thought I'd come on here and just kind of share a little bit. I was married before I met Kirk. Um, I had two daughters, my oldest, Gabriella and Natasha. When Kirk and I met, they were two and four years old. And we started dating and got married very quickly after that. Um, the, my previous husband, um, it was a dangerous situation. And when I got out of it, I was still pregnant with Natasha. And so uh, there, they never knew him as a dad. When I married Kirk, they um, were bonded to him very, very quickly at ages, you know, two and four, roughly. And from the start to the finish, like our very first date to when we got married was a roughly nine months. And uh, that, I mean, it was a whirlwind. It, it was very romantic, very sweet, very fun. We had a great courtship and relationship, I think. There were some hardships in that Kirk lost his job during, uh, right before he proposed, things like that. Things that happen when you're young and, um, you know, trying to start a life together. But we were an instant family the moment we got married. And I just wanted to say that I absolutely love and adore my husband and have since the pretty much the first day I knew that he was the one I wanted to marry. Um, because of his heart, his kindness, his generosity, his, um, I mean, he is a giver and he works hard for this family and he is a dreamer like me. And he is every bit of the organization and smart, uh, how do I say it? He is not a mess like I am. And it, we bring a, a very nice balance to each other. And so I just wanted to kind of give a tribute to my husband right now as he is in the room working, working for our family, working for this amazing adventure. Uh, and just let you all know that I personally think he is the greatest man on the planet. Um, he is raising seven amazing children plus one and he is always kind and always sweet and uh, amazing to them and so i just wanted to share that with you that we've been married 20 years now and it seems like i'll say this in, in an interesting way it seems like we've been married forever like we've always known each other like when i was married before that was like a story that i heard it wasn't me like I've always been married to Kirk, but it also seems like it's gone by so quick. Like we were just married. We were just in our twenties. So it, it, it's kind of weird and, and amazing, but I love the adventure that we've been on. I love the uh, twists and turns and I love the fact that it feels like forever, but it's gone by very quickly. So we put together, um, a video called um, Keeping It Together Together. It was one of our on the road segments and it is in our video archives under the on the road playlist. So um, you can go in there and kind of see how we keep it together. That's just a, a small snippet of how we actually keep it together. It's hard to summarize it in a few minutes of a video. But uh, with that said, I think that I would not be able to do this or any of our traveling or Expedition Forever Homestead or Dayton Terra Farms 
or seven children plus one, or two dogs, my mom, three cars, and a 12-foot travel trailer across the country without him. He really is the best man on the planet. And, and of course him earn money and do it all and enjoy the adventure the entire time. He still manages websites. He still creates websites. He still is willing to, once we get settled, work on whatever property, whether that be building me a chicken coop or remodeling a house or even building one. He is all in 100% on this crazy dream. And it's not just my dream, it is his as well. And so I'm just really excited to share the next 20 years with him and quite possibly with you on YouTube. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this next little segment my daughter Ariella made in honor of us and our anniversary. She did this for you and me, and um, I hope you enjoy it. Otherwise, blessings to you all, and enjoy the video. Bye. Thank you.